Hi everyone, I'm Ali Grayman. Today I wanted to talk to you about how you can protect yourself from OCD coming back after the recovery. So a lot of this um, uh, stuff online kind of says, well, you can never recover, uh, OCD can come back, blah, blah, blah. And I think that the reason being is because the person doesn't understand how OCD works and doesn't have proper information on all types of OCD. I find that this is extremely important. You need to become the expert in OCD. When you become the expert, you understand exactly why you're having the thought. You, you understand how the thoughts come and go. First of all, it massively helps in everyday life after OCD recovery. You can use ERP for everything. You don't like that this thought comes in. You don't like your reaction to the thought. Well, start having a different reaction on purpose and you will see how the thought will stop coming in. You know, this works for anything, how you relate to people, situations at home, situations at work, uh, productivity. You know, you can, you can apply this to every area of your life. It doesn't just work in OCD. So you need to really understand this process of the thought comes in, the brain takes notice of your reaction, and it sends it back to you with that auto reaction kind of pre-recorded on autopilot. Then if you react the same way, again, like so you're seeing now the thought come in with fear, you're reacting with fear as well, multiplying that fear, kind of saying to the brain that, yes, this is valid, this is still important, uh, please send me more. The brain says, okay, I'll send you more. And this is how um, thoughts get sorted. You know, so if, say, you react to something, oh, this is great, this is, uh, the, the, this is the best thing ever. Okay, the brain recorded that, and it will also play that back to you um, next time a situation that triggers this, uh, this memory, this thought comes up, you know? So... That's why it's very important of how you are reacting, not what thoughts are coming in. Because again, 50,000 thoughts a day, all kinds of thoughts can come in. But your reaction to them is extremely important because every time you react to every one of those 50,000 thoughts, your brain is taking notice. So the responsibility to react correctly to enhance your life is huge. Not when it comes to, not just when it comes to OCD recovery, but when it comes to um, your life overall and to live your best life, you know, not um, living in anxiety or living in fear. Like I was do doing a, a video on my other channel, Power Over Mind. If you guys haven't seen it, you probably should because it's kind of the post OCD recovery and how to get your life back on track and all these kinds of things. Um, but what I was talking about is that people live in fear all the time. With OCD, it's just extreme, un extreme fear and unrealistic fear. But people live in everyday fear their entire lives. I'm afraid to try something new. I'm afraid to change. I'm afraid to move. I'm afraid to switch jobs. I'm afraid I'm afraid, you know? And that really dwarfs their ability to do things because everywhere they turn, they have a block of fear. Even if they're not realizing it's fear, but it's unpleasant. They don't want to do it. But if you dig in, they don't want to do it because they're in fear. You know, and if they work on it and do ERP exposure, you know, they can overcome those blocks. But anyways, I kind of, as usual, diverted uh, from the original topic. And uh, But I, what I was saying with the original topic is that if you are aware how OCD works, you are aware how uh, the thoughts themselves are coming and going. You understand this um, in depth. And I, I mean, like I have 500, oh, over 500 videos on this channel explaining the details of these things, right? And I'm sure other people have videos as well um, on these topics. So you really understand what is happening. You're not the same as those people that are going to a regular doctor who told them, okay, here's some pills, take them, you know, this uh, with this amount, see me in two weeks, see ya. So, of course, this person that doesn't have any information on how OCD works, why they're getting the thoughts in the first place, what made it stop, what made it, you know, say if they did ERP, but 
For example, when I was doing ERP uh, with a therapist, when I was going through OCD recovery, I had no idea. I came in there. I didn't know what ERP was. I was, I, I was extremely lucky that uh, the therapist that they sent me to actually knew that you need to do ERP for OCD, but they never told me the word ERP. They never told me uh, how it works, why we're doing this hierarchy. Um, you know, th th there was no explanation whatsoever. They're like, here, write 10 things that scare you, do them uh, from the least uh, the scariest to the most scariest, you know, within obviously normal parameters, you know, so you know, not putting yourself in kind of danger or anything like that, you know, but just, you know, exposures, right? Daily exposures. So, and, and I did them and, um, and I felt fine. I was like, great, I've overcome OCD. And then guess what? You know, I, I don't remember exactly the time frame, but it was like a, a, maybe a month or two, a month or two later, I would say. Uh, not, not even a month or two, like within a month, a new thought came in. And then, I, and then they're like, well, do you want to do the hierarchy again? And I'm like, well, am I going to do this every month with new thought? Because I started to see this, that there's something wrong here. Like, I can't continue to do this this way. You know, so this is kind of where uh, most people who are seeing therapists and doctors are at best, you know. But like I said, most of the time, the doctors just prescribe medication and that's it, you know. Um, so, so this is, or if, uh, if a person, another possibility is if a person is seeing a uh, psychiatrist, psychologist, a lot of the times, or therapist, there, there's also this, uh, talk therapy, which is not really helpful for, OC for OCD recovery. So anyways, I digress, but the point is that you being an expert in OCD and understanding how these thoughts work and the type of themes, extremely important to understand what kind of themes OCD uh, can morph into. So, because, you know, say for example, um, you're not religious right now, what if you be uh, become religious, say, uh, 10 years down the road, and then you get a weird thought and you'll be like, why am I getting a weird thought? Um, say if you are not uh, in a relationship right now, so you don't have relationship OCD, but then when you are in a relationship, what if some weird thought that has to do with the relationship comes up? But you know, because you've watched my videos and you've watched especially the Q&A, because the Q&A, there's just a variety of different questions from different types of themes coming. So this would be a, a good uh, place to just gain um, knowledge of other things, you know, how OCD works. Um, another one would be, um, it's not as common, but I, I see it more now just because I've been doing more videos on it. Um, but, uh, and I've started to see it more, I would say over the last maybe two years is the sensory motor OCD. So say for example, if a person has had uh, harm OCD, they had harm OCD, they recovered from harm OCD. Um, and, uh, and then they get a, a feeling of, oh, something uh, in my arm feels very uncomfortable. Or uh, I, I feel like I'm blinking too much. That's sensory motor OCD. But if you have never uh, heard of it, you might start to research this. You might start going to the doctors and you know what I mean? But if you, if you understand how sensory motor works, then you're kind of protected from that. So I would say uh, between having a lot of knowledge and OCD recovery on how thoughts work, having an understanding of different themes, with all of that knowledge in, in your arsenal, you're in no danger of uh, having OCD come back. You know, and of course, understanding how ERP works, um, I find generally that people who um, take a little bit, lo like from, you know, f when I talk to clients, um, that people who take a little bit longer to recover actually have less of a chance of a setback um, right after recovery. You know, so that first, and when I say right after recovery, what I mean is, you know, recovery is a very objective word in that first few months, right? And when a person basically just got their head above water and is just, you know, they were drowning and they, they're just able just to paddle a little bit, you know? And like as somebody who's had OCD and understands that feeling where you're just able to swim. You're not swimming well, but you're just able to keep your head above water, you know? Um the person feels so relieved, but at the same time, you know, 
they're optimistic and I am cautiously optimistic because I know that, um, well, I, I know that I don't know what will happen to them if they are stressed out, if there's some sort of unexpected life curve that happens. Are they going to fall back if when OCD kind of uh, hits them full force? You know, because they've just recovered. They're freshly recovered. They're, like I said, they're not swimming well, but they are, they are swimming, you know. Um, and, and this is why when I talk about full recovery, I talk about um, at least, I would say, six months, but, but at least a year or until a person has had serious changes in their life. Um, you know, they've gone through maybe some uh, serious situations, not necessarily bad situations, but just kind of shakeups in their life. Because now, from if if they have gone through that, now we can say, okay, they have gone through shakeups, they have faced all of their triggers, and yet they're still standing. Okay, and then and a lot of time has passed. So say like a year has passed. Okay, now we can call it full recovery. You know. So that is kind of uh, uh, my my making sure that the person is fully okay, you know, because in the course of a, a you know a very short period of time, you know, it's it, what are they going to do basically when when the going gets tough, right? And again, if you have this arsenal and you understand just just about the thoughts that thoughts get worse during stressful times, you know, then when stressful times happen. You're going to be on the lookout and you're going to say, okay, this is important. This can make my OCD worse. So if I see any inkling of OCD-like symptoms, whatever I had before, that theme or this theme, or maybe some other theme that I, I felt that I could potentially get, I will disregard right away. And they're on guard. And because they're on guard, they're not getting these thoughts. You know, And you don't have to be on guard your whole life, but I would say the first year, Definitely, you know, just being aware that you've overcome a serious situation, you know, in OCD recovery, and you need to maintain progress. As the brain normalizes, um, as the anxiety, um, well, the anxiety goes down fairly quickly when the person starts to do the right things, but it just stabilizes, right? As that happens, you know, the, the chance of uh, a fallback are, is, becomes less and less. But it's, it's those stressful times, you know, whenever people come back to me or come to me or come back to me and say, oh, I'm falling, uh, I fell into OCD again. It's usually uh, a stressful situation that they were not able, uh, they were able to handle the, the stress, like the real life stress, but it um, sent their OCD kind of in tailspin. And I can tell you in terms of uh, my clients versus other people's clients um, that come to me it's very very rare that uh, my clients who have fully recovered come back to me and say that they've uh, fell back into OCD I, I really um, I really can't even think of an example right now but I'm sure there's maybe like one or two maybe three you know like but it, it you know again over the course of 10 years but it, it's not really that many you know that like, but when I say come back, I mean come back after like a year, you know, um, you know. Be, before that, it's kind of like it, it's hard to really judge because it takes, like I said, you know, when a person is going through recovery process, it takes them. I would say, again, based on what I'm seeing, about two months to say, Ali, I'm feeling great. I've gone from ten out of ten to whatever. Two out of ten, one out of ten. I'm feeling fabulous. I have fully recovered. You know, this is how they feel. This is not the reality of the situation, though. You know, they're feeling well, but again, they're just started to swim up. You know, and that they just got their head above above the surface. You know, which is great, but it's not. It's far from stable. You know, so that's why it's important to watch the stress levels. Don't start to do all of these, you know, things that, you know, you've always wanted to do because you're going to overwhelm the mind and then you can just, because stress doesn't necessarily need to be negative. It's, it's like, well, you know what? I feel better. I'm going to get a new job. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's going to be all great. It's going to be fabulous life. 
you know, and, uh, um, and a lot of the times this can send you into tailspin, you know, so it's like slow and steady. And I understand like sometimes there's no option in that. Sometimes you do have to switch jobs. Sometimes life throws you for a loop, whether you want to or not. Actually, most times when life throws you for a loop, it has really nothing to do with you. You personally, right. It just, things happen around you, but, um, but don't aggravate it more by pushing to do more things really fast you know I understand that after recovery you feel like you need to gain you know the time that you've lost but it's you know it's 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 better to have the the slow and steady wins the race you know thank you so much for listening I hope you find my videos helpful if you haven't subscribed to this channel please subscribe by the daily videos about all things related to OCD recovery if you would like to do one-on-one -on -one recovery program with me, all the information is on youhaveocd.com. You can sign up from there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.